know my voice. Nobody can save me but Christ. He saved me in a Marine Corps barracks. If we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas. And friends coming live to you from my war room here in Detroit, Michigan. From our war room here in San Antonio, today. Uh, here in Allen, Texas. And even though the location has changed, our Father's word never does. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way. The Lord said, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Listen to me. The word of God has it right. Hey, family and friends all across the world coming live to you from my war room here in Dallas, Texas, where we just honor the spirit of the Lord on this morning for sharing life in him and sharing his word with you. Listen, I'm excited to be in the war room with all of you on this morning. We're just kind of getting um, some last minute preparations up here. We should have been on at 1030. I do apologize. We um, had some uh, counseling going on and uh, and some uh, we like to we like to just worship the Lord early, um, but had some counseling going on. So had to take a little more time, but we just honor the spirit of the Lord in the war room on this morning. And we just give him honor and glory, certainly to our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, our King. We just magnify um, him and um, certainly to our precious Holy Ghost who seals that that has been a big uh, uh word that's been in cox community church on this week is the holy ghost sealing the believer and so we've been fielding many questions concerning that many of you have reached out concerning that and we just bless the lord for your questions bless the lord for your diligence and your discipleship to the lord jesus christ we're going to open in prayer we're just uh allowing everyone to come in here and um uh, many folks know we have worship service and um, we don't mind you uh, filtering through. So we're still receiving messages and, and various things and uh, and we'll answer all of you. And um, but we're we're going into this worship service. This is our Sunday morning uh, worship gathering. Uh, we were endeavoring to be in the park. And yet I read on our we always check the weather report that we have a possibility of rain today. And so I made the uh, executive decision, if you will. Uh, along with the Holy Ghost, because I'll go if he sends me. Um, but uh, he gave us a reprieve. We're in, we're in the war room this morning, but as weather permits, next week we will be in the park. And so we just magnify the spirit of the Lord on this morning for his direction and how he just keeps us in uh, everything. Listen, I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you. Grab a cup of coffee. Grab some water. I got my coffee. I got my water. The first lady's with us in the war room on this morning. We just honor her presence and we love her. And um, she's in here overseeing the technical aspect, making sure everything is on point. So we just magnify the spirit of the Lord on this morning. Um, we're going to open in prayer. If you want to get ahead, I'm going to invite you to grab Proverbs, the 10th chapter. Proverbs, the 10th chapter. That's going to be our scripture worship this morning. If you'd like to get ahead, we're going into the word of the Lord. Listen, we've been, the Holy Ghost has been talking to us about a chief concern that's on his heart and his mind. We always receive the word in real time because I don't sermonize. <laughs> you heard me correctly. I don't sermon. I'm not a preacher that sermonize. I don't preach anything. I don't say anything until I go to the Holy Ghost and then he speaks through me. I don't even say what I want to say. I'll just allow him to speak through me. He's been doing it for 30 years. And so we just magnify the spirit of the Lord. That is something that many believers, many believers are still grasping to understand. And many that are inside the church who are far from the Lord, they don't understand it. That, that there's a difference between sermonizing and the Lord speaking through his servants. There's a huge difference. And when the Holy Ghost is speaking through his servants, it safeguards us against his chief concern that we've been in for, this is our third uh, session now, our third period of sharing, preaching another Jesus. It safeguards us from preaching another Jesus, another spirit and another gospel. And so in the first period of Sharon, we were talking about preaching another Jesus as we were at the outset. And then in the second session, uh, which was last week, we were talking about preaching another spirit. This week, we're going into the word of the Lord to talk about that third uh, part, preaching another gospel. And I'm telling you right now, you want to fasten seven spiritual seatbelts because I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is coming. 
coming in with force today. He's coming in like a Russian mighty wind, and I want everyone to be ready. I'm ready. I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I hope you're in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, and I pray that the Holy Ghost is touching somebody else beside me or will touch somebody else beside me. Listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, if you look at the signs in the world today, you would understand that on the prophetic timeline, that the prophetic timeline is overlapped now, the world historical timeline. And whenever this occurs, those of us who have understanding the Holy Ghost know that it's going that the blessing of the Lord or the cursing of the Lord, the wrath of the Lord will begin to pour into the earth realm. And we are seeing that right now. Blessing to all those that are safe in Christ, and unfortunately, judgment for all those that are far from Christ and outside of Christ. And that's why, as his ambassadors of his kingdom, we are beckoning everyone to come in right now while you have a chance, because the door to this ark is shutting, fast shutting fast approaching fast shutting and when it is shut you are shut out and what happens next we have warned you the scriptures have warned you we didn't want it to happen to you it was a, the scripture the word of the lord says that it's the father's will that no man perish we didn't want it for you but obviously you want it for yourself because when we made the invitation to come into this great kingdom of the lord jesus christ you told us about other religions you told us about other uh, uh occults and told us about pseudo and quasi religions and new age you told us what you didn't want what you did want you told us your preference you told us everything but what the kingdom wants to hear is that you're saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost in the lord jesus and so you what you receive you deserve it because you chose it you said bishop that's kind of harsh that's kind of mean no that's kind of actually your scripture it is your scripture when the lord says uh and he says i set before you this day life and death choose life that you may live. He's telling you to choose it. He's not going to choose it for you because he gave you free will. So when people start talking, I don't understand why good things, bad things happen to good people. Yes, you do because you chose it. And you don't understand the word of the Lord. And there's a decree already set in the earth from its foundation where the Lord said, I am not mocked whatsoever a man sows. That shall he also reap. Anybody know the word of the Lord on this morning? So don't get mad now because you chose. See, what you want to do is you want to live in an evil manner, but receive blessings and receive good, and you live a cursed life. No, if you live a cursed life, the Lord said, I'm not mocked. If you live a cursed life, you're going to reap a cursed life. But in likewise, if you live a blessed life, you are going to receive the blessing of the Lord. You say, well, that's kind of unfair. Why do I have to serve him to be blessed? Because you don't get to make the rules to the game. He's sovereign. His power is sovereign. He gets to make the rules he created them and you get to play by him but he leaves you a choice you don't have to but then you have to have the power to sustain your word and yourself because the only other place that he created that's why he's the creator is he created a place for demons to go who are cursed and who fell from their first state in other words rebelled against him so if you like those rebels decide you're going to choose the way of death and to become a rebel then you're going to have to have the power to keep yourself from going to hell seeing is how you don't that's why you end up there and that's what the lord is trying to tell us it's simply wisdom and we don't want to receive wisdom we want to do what we want to do and then tell the sovereign creator the sovereign lord he's going to change the rules to the game no he's not and that's the problem with most people you think the lord is a genie in a bottle he's going to change the game for you he's not now let me get on the bright side of this okay because that's the dark side for those that choose it but for everyone that wants to choose the side of light and i was ministering just this morning in, 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 in one of our other platforms about light if you missed that go on TikTok. i shared that short word this morning uh you can find it on our facebook ministry page you can also find it on the personal page and you can also find it on youtube in the short section on, my, on our youtube platform all right and you go on there and um you go on there and um and 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 receive that word all right now for those of you who want the light okay receive the lord jesus right now you don't have to wait till the lord uh finishes ministering the point of him ministering is for you to receive the lord jesus at the point you've received the lord jesus the word has done its job the conviction of the word the offense of the word put a mental note on that we're going to break that down further today because many of you don't understand what that what that is referring to but i'm going to tell you right now i'm going to tell you right now it's 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 uh it is more powerful than you think and so the holy ghost is going to break it down for this for us this morning i hope you have time to hang out with us again um pull up your uh go ahead and pull up your pull up a good chair and and um and pull up uh 
some good uh, coffee and water. I'm telling you right now, we're in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. All of you that are on, we greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. All of my leaders that are coming on or will be coming on, we greet you in the matchless name of our Savior. All the saints out there, we just bless the Lord for you on this morning. Any amount of time you can hang out with us this morning and worship with us, um, we just bless and honor the Spirit of the Lord for you. Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas is a ministry that touches people all over the world. We are not uh, assuming here to be famous. We're, this is not about our name, but it's the name of the Lord Jesus. We go about quietly doing his work every day. We're not concerned about fame or fortune. The Lord blesses us and he takes care of us, but we are going to do his work while it is day for the night is coming when no man can work. And so I want to invite you to begin to work for the Lord Jesus. And please understand the work of the kingdom is different than the work of the church. Both are important, but the work of the kingdom is paramount. The work of the church will end, but the work but the work, the work of the kingdom will never end. It's eternal. And so listen, come on and let's get that down in our spirit now. If you don't understand that, then you got to get deep into your word and let the Holy Ghost teach you. The work of the kingdom never ends. There's a new heaven, new earth, new city, Jerusalem. Come on and let's get that down in our spirit. So if you're not, if you're not accustomed to working right now for the Lord, um, you're going to be in trouble and you may not make it into that place because when we go to heaven, most people are saying, I'm going to sit on my heavenly seat and do nothing. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. There's still work before the Lord when we get in that new heaven, and that new earth, and that new city, Jerusalem. So I want to counsel you, and I want to uh, uh, bless the Lord for you at the same time. Again, after you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> receive the baptism of his precious Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost inside of you, and he comes into you, and he performs a work in you, has a personal relationship with you, and all of you referring to him as a it. I know that says that just in one place of scripture, not referring to what you think it's referring to. Don't have time to break that down. I've broken it down before. You can find that teaching along the way on our YouTube uh, platform because I've addressed that many times before. But let me say this the Holy Ghost is not a it in the sense that the scriptures talk about. Most of you have mistranslated that, don't understand what it means. The Holy Ghost is a he, the Holy Ghost is relatable, the Holy Ghost has personhood. And most of you are like, oh, you know, he's not a man, he's not this, he's not that's not what we're saying either. And see, most of you just need deeper revelation. But Anyhow, don't have time to get with you, uh, those of you that lack understanding, but for those of you that are coming in, uh, receive the Lord Jesus Christ, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. This is our message. This is what, as ambassadors, the, the king of our kingdom has sent us to tell you, and so you can receive him, and when you genuinely receive him in your heart, you don't need a preacher to help you do that. Just talk to him right where you are. Open up your mouth, lay your mind on him, and he'll lay his mind and his spirit on you, and he'll begin to perform that work in you. The next thing I want to counsel you by prophetic instruction to do is pick up your Bible, start reading it from Matthew to Revelation. Some days you might be able to get a few verses in. Some days you might get whole chapters in. Some days you might be choking on it. Some days you might be convicted by it. But whatever the circumstance, continue to press on in that word. Then back up and read Genesis to Malachi. And, I tr and I, I'm telling you right now, I trust the Holy Ghost because he's done it with me and so many others. That as you take that journey through the entire word of God, you need the entire word of God. Why, Bishop? Because the entire word of God is the entire counsel of God. I'm going to go around that block for the hard of hearing in the stiff neck again. Even those of you who have been on inside the church for a long time, the whole Bible is the whole counsel of the Lord. I, I have 30 years of experience to know how true that statement is and to qualify that statement because anything the Lord is going to say to you, it is going to be verified, signified, and dignified right from the pages of the Word of God. It is going to be confirmed and affirmed. Any revelation he gives you, the canon of scripture, scripture I say it all the time, the canon of scripture is closed, but the canon of revelation is not. So please understand that for all of you that keep saying, and one of the ploys of the devil, let me just pull the wool off the devil's tricks right now, off of most of your eyes. We got sects coming up right now that say, if it's not expressly written in the scripture, then it doesn't count. And what Satan is using that to do is to beat many believers out of their sound doctrines and tenets of their faith that have been long standing. We're not talking about the traditions of men. We're talking about the immutable word of the Lord. Learn the difference. There are some things you're pastor said they are not immutable they can change but there are but everything else the lord has said and his word is immutable because his spirit is immutable because his mind is immutable making him immutable so his word does not change it's forever settled in heaven and let me tell you something right now you can fight against it here on earth but it'll be at forever settled in earth because his wrath will make sure of it or his spirit drawing you will make sure of it so either way you will bow that knee willingly or you will bow it forcibly but every knee is going to bow and every tongue 
just going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I'm telling you right now, I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I almost jumped out the window off that one, but I got to stay in here so the Holy Ghost can teach us on this morning. Listen, Proverbs, the 10th chapter, let's get it. Scripture worship, then we're going to our substratum scripture. And our substratum scripture, you're going to find in 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, 2 Corinthians 11th chapter, if you want to get ahead. So we're going in our scripture worship, Proverbs 10. Let me get there because I'm, I'm over here um, out of line right now because I'm telling you to go and I'm not even turning my Bible yet. So let me get there because I'm at, I'm leading and I like to be a good leader and get there myself. All right, I'm there. That's the beautiful part. I know the word of God. I can get there quickly. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace of life on this morning in this sanctuary, in this house of worship, in this place where you're not invited to, where you dwell. And so it's not a matter of inviting you. You dwell here each and every day with us. Your angels are camped out about this place. We praise you because nothing can happen to us unless it comes by your mighty and your sovereign hand, that thereby that no man on this earth and no demon in hell can stand before the body of Christ all the days of our existence upon this earth. Father, you are preparing the body of Christ right now to meet the bridegroom in the marriage supper of the Lamb, that we might stand before you and receive the things that have been done in our words and been done in our body. Lord, prepare us. You're preparing the body of Christ to stand before you without spot and without blemish and without wrinkle. <laughs> to present us as a perfect bride before you because that's what you deserve and you deserve nothing less. Father, in this worship service this morning, let your mighty dunamis, let your mighty power come in this place on this morning to arrest hearts, to change souls, to change minds. Lord, to grip hearts, to convict hearts, to take men's hearts over and to penetrate into those deep places, even to the apostates, to remove their spiritual lethargy and their spiritual apathy so they will not stay, remain lukewarm, but they will get hot. We don't even want them to be cold at this point. It's too late in the game. Lord, we need everybody to get hot for you. Said the harvest is ripe. The harvest is truly ripe, but the labors are few. But you are bringing labors into the harvest right now. You're bringing them by the millions. Revival is broke out in the United States of America and the across the nations of the world. Broke out in our universities. That we're sure of. Bro it's breaking out in our homes. We're sure of that because it's broken out in Cox Community Church. It's broken out not just in the church, but in our home. But our home is the church. Our home is the sanctuary because we have to know how to conduct ourselves in our homes first before we can come into your house and conduct ourselves there. And so we don't see a difference between the church and our homes. And that's because of the, the grace, uh, your grace and your mercy and your mind to us. And so, Father, we bless you on this morning as we go into the word of the Lord and as we break the bread of life. Father, speak to your people as only you can. I decrease that you might increase in me. Speak and say what only you are going to speak and say. And, the, and you're the only one that can speak and say it because you're sovereign. There's no other like unto you in all the heavens and the earth. There is no other God. There is no other Savior. All other saviors and gods are dead, sleeping in their graves right now. But we have a living and a risen Savior who is alive today. And somebody might ask me, how do you know, Bishop? Because he's alive all down in my spirit and my soul and has given me the precious promise of your spirit, Father, who has come into me and is in me as a well, springing up into life everlasting. And not only me, but all your children, Lord, all in the body of Christ, that the word of the Lord is truly brought to pass, that the Lord Jesus is not ashamed to call us brethren because he is the captain of our salvation. He is the high priest and the apostle of our profession. He is the bishop and the shepherd of our soul and we stand with the finger pointed at the devil this morning satan the lord rebuke you because we know who our savior is and we know that when you try to come in like a flood the spirit of the lord will lift up a standard against you and so we rebuke you on this morning you must stay in your place and if you proceed past the boundaries may you be driven in the abyss by the firepower of the holy ghost that stands amongst the redeemed because we're on this highway of holiness and no wicked no perverted shall pass therein not even the fool shall err in but the redeemed shall stand there. We are on this highway of holiness. Lord, let that word sink in your people's spirit on this morning, that there is a way, that there is a highway and a way, and it should be called the way of holiness. And so we stand in your holiness on this morning, Lord. Blanket us, saturate us in your holiness, Lord, that we might stand before you holy, for your word truly says to be ye holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Lord, may we separate ourselves from this untoward and crooked and perverse generation. May we separate ourselves from this world and touch not the unclean thing. I pray for every brother and sister right now who is truly in Christ struggling with any unclean thing, Lord, that you break that desire in us, Lord, that you break that thing in us right now that keeps us coming back to that unclean thing, Lord, that we might stand before you, holy priest, clean and acceptable. There be no more scandals in the body of Christ except those that have been determined for those that have been long standing and refused to 
to repent. Lord, may they still, we're still calling them to repentance at this time. And Father, some are in the clutches of scandal right now. Some are in the clutches of judgment right now. But I know in your mercy, Lord, that if they will turn their hearts toward you, Lord, you said a broken spirit and a contrite heart, you will not despise. You will receive them. And so we pray right now in the firepower of the Holy Ghost that the conviction of the Holy Ghost will touch them and they will turn, Father, and they will come to you and they will cry out, Lord, receive me. Lord, restore me. Lord, revive me. And Lord, use me again in your service. Father, we pray for them because you said when we see our brothers and sisters overtaken in the fault, we who are spiritual, we who are in right standing with you, we are to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering ourselves. Because Father, as the old saints used to go, if it were not for your grace, there go I. And so Father, we're not, we don't want to go into that pit this morning. We want to put a hand and put a life uh, raft in there and put a, and, 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 and pull our brothers and sisters out of that pit right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, begin to touch, begin to convict, begin to restore our brothers and sisters who might be in any pit on this morning, anybody who's in that pit of oppression and depression this morning. Lord, we pray that you would touch their hearts and their minds and let them know that they are loved in Christ Jesus, that your perfect love cast out fear. And if they will keep their mind stayed on you, you will keep them in perfect peace because you give peace not as the world gives, but your peace is perfect and it passes all of our intellect and understanding. Father, have your way in this service on this morning. I'm feeling sassy in the Holy Ghost on this morning, Lord, because there is no other king. You are the king of kings and you are the Lord of lords. And you have made your children kings and priests unto our father, unto your father and our God. And so King Jesus, we bless you on this morning. We give you honor. We give you glory, Father. In King Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I don't know about you, but I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you right now, the devil's mad because he don't want us on this broadcast this morning because he is scared of the word that's getting ready to proceed out of our mouth. The word, the worship has already gone forth in this place. Well, prayer has already gone forth in this place. But as our custom is, we open up in prayer with all of you because maybe you've opened up in prayer in your house of worship. You're joining us. Maybe you've never you don't go into the house of the Lord, but now you can come into the house of the Lord on this broadcast. I'm telling you right now, the Lord's reaching out in this time and in this generation, and the gospel is going to the ends of the earth because of social media. And we bless the Lord because what that says is that he is reaching out and he's doing all he can to bring us into this glorious gospel. I'm telling you right now. And so I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I'm so excited to be in the Lord. Listen, put your thinking caps on with me. Uh, let's let the Holy Ghost refresh our spirits on this morning. And listen, if you missed my little short message this morning, the, it's called Marvelous Light. Go and get it on TikTok. Go and in the YouTube, the short section on our YouTube channel and get that short video, it will bless you. I don't know if it's even three minutes long or just three minutes long. That is a revelation that came to me this morning. Get that revelation in your spirit. Let me emphatically state for all of you believers, listen, there is no need for us to fear. The Lord said in Matthew, the 24 chapter, see, 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 perceive with your eyes, perceive with your spiritual eyes, your spiritual eyes of perception. He said, see that you are not troubled by all the things that are coming upon the face of the earth. These things he said must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So let's not worry about the end because the end for the believer is not the same as the unbeliever. The end for the believer, the Lord says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. There is no evil in the future of the believer except the satanic attacks of the evil one and the Lord has given us power over all his forces. So we do not need to fear. We do not need to fear. I'm going to say it again. We do not need to fear for those in the balcony and in the back. We do not need to fear because the spirit of the Lord has cast out fear. Fear, the scripture says, has torment. The Lord doesn't torment his people nor does he allow us to be tormented. If you have torment of fear in your spirit on this morning. Satan has overtaken your spirit. All you got to do is go down on your knees in King Jesus' name and say, Lord, restore me. Lord, encourage me. Lord, put your word in me like a mighty hammer and like a mighty fire to drive out the dross of Satan's attack. And I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost will come in you and many of you, you're overtaken because the Holy Ghost is not present in you because your preacher lied to you. So let this preacher tell you the truth. You need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't need the summer. You're talking about the Holy Ghost is with me and the Holy Ghost comes upon me. No, that's Old Testament baby. In the New Testament, the Holy Ghost has to be in you. Bishop, where is that? Acts, the second chapter. In the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came in like a rushing mighty wind. He didn't just come into the room. The scripture says he filled all of them. That means he came inside of them for the hard of hearing, the lack of understanding, those who have no revelation, and those who just don't want it. 
Come on and get it down in your spirit. We're not scared of anybody here. I'm telling you right now, I'm not scared of anybody. I'm going to preach it to you straight with no chase. I don't care who you are. Hope you get it in your spirit. If you don't, you're going to have to answer for it. So let me warn you. Proverbs, the 10th chapter, the 8th verse, the wise in heart will receive commandments. Yep, I'm going to pause right there because you need about a good Selah moment. As Psalms would say, as King David would say, you need a Selah moment there and I need to get a sip of coffee. Mm-hmm, because many of us, we're taking the Lord like he's given askings and suggestings. The Lord's not asking, man. The Lord's not suggesting anybody. When the Lord gives a word, he gives commands. Mm -hmm. We don't like this kind of preaching. Because you just told the United States of America, you told your family members, you told your spouse, you even told the cat and the dog, the goldfish and your children, I will do whatever I want to do and say whatever I want to say because the Constitution gives me that right. I don't care what the Constitution of the United States gives you the right to do. In the kingdom, we are harnessed. We speak what the Lord tells us to speak and nothing more. We do what the Lord tells us to do and we do nothing more. We are servants in the kingdom. We are not superstars. We are not hot shots. We are not CEOs in the kingdom. We are none of that. We are servants and we are an ambassadors. Come on and get it down in your spirit. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. And I'm going to tell you why you don't like it. Matter of fact, I'm going to read it to you. It says, but a, but a prating fool shall fall. Let me translate that for you in the original Hebrew. But a babbler will fall right on his face. That's what that's saying right there. Bishop, I don't believe you. Go look up the original Hebrew and you'll read it exactly as that. But a babbling fool will fall on his face. You know what we have in this time in this generation? Somebody type it in the comments. We got a bunch of babbling fools falling on their faces because everything that you listen let me get this down in your spirit you read it's right around i believe isaiah the 44th chapter you're going to read where the lord says that i i listen he says he will he's going to uh make the diviners mad he turns back the he turns back the wise men and makes their knowledge foolish he makes their knowledge foolish but he confirms the word of his servants and performs the counsel of his messengers have you not ever read that let me tell you right now all of you, he makes diviners mad. Our diviners in this day are those on the stock market, those in, our, uh, uh, in, in Congress and in the White House, our politicians. I refer to them as demagogues, all our demagogues, all of our, uh, those on Wall Street. Diviners. Diviners mean in their forecasting, telling you, oh, this is what's going to happen on the stock market. This is what's going to happen in the government. This is what." Let me tell you something. The word of the Lord says that the Lord, the king of the, the, the heart of the king, is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it wheresoever he wills. Come on, like a ship, like a bridle, like a bit in a horse's mouth, the Lord turns the helm of government. They think they're doing what they want to do. They're not. They're just playing right into his hands. Mm-hmm. Read Psalms, the second chapter. If you never read Psalms, the second chapter, the second division for my theological students, if you never read Psalms 2, go and read it. The Lord, all these folks talking about they're going to fight against him and his Christ. The Lord sitting in heaven laughing at them in derision. You know why? Because his word is sovereign. His power upholds his word, and his power and his word are both immutable because his spirit is immutable, as I alluded to earlier, because he's immutable. And because he cannot change, his word cannot change, his power cannot change. So whatever he gives a word to, his power will back it up, baby. And you cannot change it, no demon in hell can and no man on earth so the government is doing what it thinks it wants to do but you're really just doing what the lord has already determined you to do come on and get it down in your spirit i know you think you're in control you're not you're in control of your decisions you're not in control how they play out in the earth the united states government and governments of the world you're not in control kings you're not in control queens you're not in control presidents and can i say this to the church you're not in control bishops pastors all of you apostates all of you secular those far from god unbelievers heathens you can argue with the lord's word all you want but you are are not in control come on and get it down in your spirit and the faster you do it the better off you be because this word right here says all babbling fools are going to fall right on their faces and if you read isaiah the 30th chapter you are going to utterly fall that's right bishop you throw out a lot of scriptures that's because i'm a walking bible if the book wasn't in front of me honey i could still preach from from uh pretty much cover to cover out of this thing because it is it is indelibly printed on my heart come on and get it down in your spirit i know y'all don't like that I know you don't like this kind of preaching because you just want to do whatever you want to do. But let's keep reading. Maybe this word will convict you this morning and change your heart and your mind. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. So if you feel like I, I get a whole bunch of people that I'm counseling and they come to me and say, Bishop, it seems like all hell is breaking loose. Pins are popping on every side. Yes, that means you're walking unstable. But you know why you're walking unstable? Let's read the second part. But he that perverteth his ways shall be known. You know what that is translated there? Shall fall in scandal.
You're going to be exposed in scandal. You want a scandal scripture? That's it right there. Read the original Hebrew. You are going to be exposed, it says in the original Hebrew. That's scandal. That's the English word scandal. And this is the Hebrew phrase. See, the Hebrews deal in symbols. That's why all you talk about the word rapture is not in the Bible. It actually is. But Hebrew, the Hebrew language, the brag language is in symbols. The English language is plain forward. So we use plain phrases like caught up. But if you get grab the Greek Bible, if you grab the Latin Bible, in the Greek it's harpazo, rapture to rapture in the latin it's rapturo same thing to forcibly cease to rapture where we get the old english word uh rapture and then we come on to the modern day of our straightforward phrasing caught up how shall they escape all these phrases mean the same thing rapture the word rapture is in your bible all you uneducated ones come on and get it down in your spirit you don't like this kind of preaching because again you want to do what you want to do but ain't nobody scared of you i'm gonna preach to you anyhow until you get it down in your spirit or you get judged one of the two because the word of the lord is for salvation or judgment based upon your acceptation or your rejection that's why the, that's what brings the past the word of the lord and what makes it true in hebrews when it says the word of our god is a sharp two-edged sword come on and get it down in your spirit i know you don't like that let's read verse 10 he that winketh with the eye causeth sorrow mm -hmm. but a prating fool shall fall many of you think you're slick that winking eye is all my slicksters you think you're gonna outsmart god you think you're smarter than the holy ghost you think you're gonna say and do what you want to do and say what you want to say and nothing's gonna happen wrong many of you already found out that's wrong and many more of you are getting ready to find out because if you haven't noticed already we got whenever revival sparks baby you can bet on your heels and we we're listening to perry stone last night and he absolutely was in the firepower of the holy ghost and he absolutely had it right whenever revival breaks out if you follow history and you follow the history of the church in particular as it, as it the body of Christ has been in the world whenever revival starts breaking out a massive event a cataclysmic event of destruction where where hundreds of thousands even millions of people uh die is getting ready to happen and a revival broke out before world war one broke out before world war two come on and get it down in your spirit y'all don't like this but i'm telling you the more you don't like it that resistance that you're given i can discern it in the holy ghost and he is going to preach through me harder until you get it down in your spirit until that's what brings to pass the prophet Jeremiah his revelation by the Holy Ghost when he says that the word of the Lord will fall like a hammer and like fire and it's falling like a hammer in this worship uh, worship experience on this morning it's definitely falling like fire because it's falling like fire all down in my soul come on and get it in your spirit Come on, let's get that last part in. But a braiding fool shall fall. Now notice that statement that same statement was made in verse 8, but if you study the original Hebrew in 10, it doesn't have the same meaning. And in and, and verse 8, as I alluded to earlier, it means that a babbling fool will fall on his face. But in verse 10, where it says, but a prating fool shall fall, this one is translated differently. It's translated, but a bold reproof promotes peace. A bold reproof. You see it in verse 10, but a prating fool shall fall. But a bold reproof promotes peace put a mental pin on that because that's going to be critical and that's why this is the scripture uh, uh the worship scripture this morning you put the mental pin on that but a bold reproof re promotes peace because that's going to set our minds up for what the holy ghost is going to talk to us about this morning all right second corinthians the 10th chapter we're moving right through here this morning not going to be before you long the holy ghost already uh told me uh, uh already said to me uh gave me the sermon of the duration how long we're going this morning it won't be long he didn't give me the exact time don't be foolish but he let me know that we're going to get straight to the point this morning because that is all that needs to be done. And what he gives me to do, I do only that. Come on and let's get it down our spirit. Preaching another Jesus. Preaching another Jesus. Let's read the scripture. 2 Corinthians uh, the, 10, the 11th chapter. I'm sorry, not the 10th chapter. The 11th chapter. I got Proverbs 10 still in mind. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the first verse. Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, says the Apostle Paul, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I I have a spouse you to one husband I already broke that down in in our first period so if you missed that they're both on youtube go on there and catch yourself up to speed preaching another jesus it's entitled one and two uh you'll see uh smwg that sunday morning worship gathering acronym uh, look for that and then look for preaching another jesus part one and two get yourself up to speed part one i covered that that i may present you as a chaste virgin to christ but i fear lest by any means that as the serpent beguiled at eve this is apostasy and this is what's happening to the church right now we truly have two churches right now an apostate one and then we have the ecclesia the body of christ uh beguiled at eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in 
in Christ. In the second period uh, of this sharing, uh, Preaching Another Jesus, part two, again on YouTube, I broke that down. Don't have to, that's not my assignment, so you're going to have to go back and get that teaching to bring about the whole picture here. But this is where our main concentration is. For if he that cometh preached another Jesus, we covered that in part one, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, that was last week in part two, which you have not received, or another gospel, that's where we're going this week, baby, another gospel, underline it, underline it, I would underline those. Those three, preaching another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. And we establish that, let me finish the scripture, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So the Lord, so the apostle Paul says, I come to you preaching. I'm, I'm God, I'm, I'm an apostle who's jealous over you with godly jealousy. I espoused you to one husband. I didn't give you the, uh, you did, I didn't give you a gospel that allows you to mix your uh, faith with everything else, filthy, uh, filthy doctrine in this world. As the scripture says, seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, he said, nope, I gave you a pure doctrine, a pure gospel uh, from a pure spirit and from a pure King Jesus. And now you all are mixing it. You are mixing your faith with other filth in this world. And when you mix it, the scripture lets us know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Not right away, but over time, baby, you start getting a you start getting a rise in your spirit of wickedness. Adolf Hitler did this. Antioch Epiphanes did this. Nero did this. Caligula did this. When Adolf Hitler started off, he wasn't evil like that. He became like that because he kept mixing his faith. So did Caligula. So did Nero. So did all these other emperors and kings and presidents. You start mixing your another faith. Uh, you start mixing your faith with all this other filth, and eventually Satan comes in, and demons are de. You know what it means to be demoniacal. You're talking about a mixture what mixture a mixture of rebellion and violence brings about a demoniac think of the gathering demoniac a mixture of rebellion you know why he's a gathering demoniac he was rebelling probably against the word of the lord a mixture of rebellion and violence brings about a demoniac you want to gas demons out get rid of the rebellion you need to minister a word of, against the rebellion in a person. Are you ready to receive the Lord Jesus? I don't even waste my time with people that are ready to receive the Lord Jesus. You know why? Because until you're ready, you're supposed to be over there with those demons tormenting you. That's why the Apostle Paul said, I turned Hymenaeus and Alexander. He said, I turned them over to the enemy that they may learn to fear the Lord. The Lord has allowed evil to remain in the earth because Satan still serves the purposes of the Lord. Why did the Lord allow Satan to remain in the earth because this this uh, uh as isaiah the 14th just read isaiah the 14th chapter in ezekiel 28 for homework i also have we also have uh we were weeks in those patches of scripture go on uh youtube and you'll find that series we were in those two patches of scripture for, scriptures for week we were in ezekiel 36 come on so much powerful uh revelation and rhema word on that youtube every message that's ever been preached in 30 years of my preaching is a rhema word so right now it's what the holy ghost was saying in real time just go look at it. you don't take don't take my word for it just go just go uh receive the word go hear it go learn go learn it go go listen to it and it'll and it'll uh readily come to you that it's a right now word in that time especially if you can remember the historical timeline back in those times come on and let's get and, and a lot of it is even for now and and a lot of it will be for the future come on because the lord's word is immutable and it does not change and so we have to get this down in our spirit preaching another gospel and so when you mix when you mix rebellion with violence you got a demoniacal spirit and that's what's happening in america america is a rebellious nation just like old israel so when we're reading the scripture the lord began many years ago to show me the scriptures not just as a reading as a book but as a set of blueprints as i matured in the holy ghost many of you are still reading it like a book that and you preach like you're reading it like a book but when you learn that the bible is a set of blueprints when the lord open you if you're uh, if you're blessed and you're privileged that the holy ghost will open your eyes to see the word of god as a set of blueprints he will speak to you prophetically in a whole nother dimension and your prophecy will go into a whole nother dimension and your preaching will go into a whole nother dimension i'm dropping heavily gems right now i hope the holy ghost is touching somebody else beside me because many of you that's what it means to be on the meat of the word you're still on the milk of the word if you're still reading this as a narrative if you're still reading this as a good book of stories if you're still reading this and you're still trying to get a grasp you're on the milk of the word baby but let me tell you something when you get on the meat of the word you'll start to see the word of god as a set of blueprints and god will begin to share the deep things with you and when you open your mouth that what you did with the lord in secret shall be seen openly you'll be rewarded openly his word says it and he keeps his word and he is keeping it in me because i'm telling you right now 
out of your mouth will flow pure water and it's flowing out of my mouth right now by the dem clear demonstration of the Holy Ghost presence and power in me and that's bringing to pass John the fourth chapter where the Lord says my word will be in you, my spirit will be in you like a well of water springing up in to everlasting life you're seeing a clear demonstration of that on this broadcast this morning come on and let's get it down in our spirit I bless the Lord on this morning for his grace and for his mercy listen and the uh, listen mixing mixing so we can't mix our faith because when you mix your faith please hear me carefully you will get to this other phrase another another you know how you get to another another is a theological symbol another is a theological symbol for mixing when you see the term another jesus another spirit another gospel that is a term of mixing another you got another one he didn't say you threw out the first one you just got another one working in your spirit you got that new age working in your spirit you got them chakras from hinduism working in your spirit you're rubbing that fat belly guy buddha in your spirit you got that islam and i don't care if you say you're not a jihadist that book is a book of demons and it is scripture of demons it's about as inspired by the holy ghost as satan himself come on and get it down in your spirit you don't like this kind of preaching and let me tell you something the Torah is not even going to save my Jewish brothers and sisters and I don't speak against you because I love Israel but let me caution you Israel that book of the Torah is not going to save you you got to come all the way over into your Messiah now the Lord Jesus Christ I'm telling you right now get that down in your Jewish spirit because I love you and I and I'm telling you right now we in America everybody's not an uh, 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 anti-semite we are not in the body of Christ. Matter of fact, anybody in the body of Christ isn't anti-Semitic. So you have allies. You have brothers and sisters that love you. But I'm going to tell you right now, I love you enough to tell you the truth. You must receive the Lord Jesus just like us Gentiles receive the Lord Jesus. Come on and get it down in your spirit. I'm not afraid of you. I'll preach the truth to you. I do love you, Israel, but I will preach the truth to you. Many of you I've spoken to personally over my 30 years of preaching. And as I've traveled across this country, and as I've spoken abroad, I, I'm telling you right now, and, and many of you have received the word, but let me explain to you. I'm not afraid to preach it to you, even though I love you. And the more I love you, the more I preach it to you. The more I love you, the more I'll give it to you, because I have an open door through the friendship that we have. And I'm going to use that friendship. I'm going to take that friendship. I'm going to use that friendship and take it for all that I can get, not take you and use you for all I can get. I know many of you thought that's what I said, because you got a foul spirit. But no, I'm going to take that friendship, and I'm going to use it for all I have to give you the Lord Jesus Christ because that's the greatest gift we can ever give each other. Stop worrying about Christmas presents. Give somebody Jesus' greatest Christmas gift you can ever give them. Now, when we're talking about another gospel, you see that? We got a preaching another Jesus. That's what the Holy Ghost concern for us is. And these periods of sharing, another spirit, again, covered that last week, another gospel. Now, fasten them seven spiritual seatbelts if you haven't already. I told you at the outset, we're going to consider, we're talking about preaching another gospel now let me back up and say this and and when we were talking about preaching another jesus we're talking about considering the source we're talking about preaching another spirit we're talking about considering the influence but when we're talking about preaching another gospel now we're going to consider the foundation the foundation the foundation of our king we're in his word we're going to consider the foundation today. i'm telling you right now because many of you, your foundation is off. And let me explain to you the word of the Lord said. The Lord gave a the Lord gave a word of caution, a caveat. He said he he warned all of us. I'm to every human being on this planet. The Lord Jesus warned us. If you didn't get the warning, pick up your Bible and, and look for it. Just type the words in in Google and the scripture will come up and read it. The Lord said, if you build your house on sand there was one man that built his house on sand one that built his house on a rock and when the storm came against that house that was built on sand on the sand he says it fell and listen to the key words and great was the fall of it that is a theological theological symbol for eternal judgment in the lake of fire bishop where is that revelation the 19th 20th and 21st chapter i talk fast so let me slow it down so you can get it 19th 20th and 21st chapter of revelation read about the lake of fire and read about the second death it's appointed unto men to die once after that the judgment the judgment is a second death 
So those of you that are not believers, those of you that are fearful, unbelieving, witches, warlocks, liars, thieves, murderers, all this other stuff, you will not only die once uh, where your body and your, your spirit and your soul separates from your body. When we get in that eternal state, that body will be glorified, given back to you. You'll be sent to the lake of fire where that body will burn and be tormented forever. I know you don't like this kind of preaching, but don't be afraid of it because we're not trying to preach you into that lake, baby. We're trying to preach you out in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Come on and get it down in your spirit. Listen to the Holy Ghost carefully. Listen to what he's saying you great will be the fall of that house but the one that builds his house on that rock baby that house is going to stand when the storm comes that when the storms come that's why i'm not sitting around here fearing as i said in that little short word on this morning marvelous light we're not sitting around here fearing because our house is built on a rock which is a theological symbol for the kingdom of the lord jesus christ Bishop, how do you know that? Pick up your Bible and read Matthew, the 16th chapter. The Lord said, upon this rock, I will establish my church. I will establish my kingdom, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell are the theological symbol in this other word for the storm. The storm. Anytime you see a storm in the ministry of Jesus, you're watching Satan in action. Anytime a storm comes up in your life, you're watching Satan in action, baby. But let me tell you something. That's what makes the word of the Lord true from the prophet Isaiah's mouth by Revelation of the Holy Ghost when he said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him because G King Jesus stood up and he spoke to the winds and he spoke to the waves and he told them to behave their self and he's so powerful he spoke to death and told death to behave itself and it did it, it has to do it, anything that King Jesus decrees, it must come to pass, it shall come to pass, it will come to pass, I'm telling you I'm ready to fly up out of here right now in the name of the Lord Jesus because I'm telling you I'm in the firepower of the Holy Ghost, I don't know about you, we got to consider the foundation today when you start mixing when you start mixing and you come up with another gospel you are ruining the very foundation of your heart the very foundation of your mind the very foundation of your soul the very foundation of your body because psychosomatically when you whatever goes in your mind begins to feed your body and begins to break your brain down and, bre and break your body down dementia sets in and and all kind of diseases and infirmities and let me tell you this let me give you a clue to infirmity in the church notice i didn't say in the body of christ but in the church much illness in the church whether it be mental in your physical body are demons they are infirming demons not affirming many of you treat demons like they're affirming no, they are infirming, in, notice the word in, infirming. They are firming up that sickness inside of you. Oh, I'm going to pause right there and let that sink deep in our spirits. They are infirming that sickness inside of you, infirming. They're establishing it in you. Like you think of a law firm, the law firm, a, a, a firm of law. It's a firm of sickness and disease and death. Some of you, they are infirming your family with death. Many of you have lost loved ones unexpectedly, suddenly. That's because judgment has crossed in the, uh, from the prophetic timeline, has crossed the world historical timeline. Millions are leaving here now. We have received revelation in hell. We received it over a year ago. Hell is enlarging herself to receive the wicked right now. There are times in history hell begins to enlarge herself. And all the wicked are dumped in there and only the meek remain. That's why you see after World War II, that was one of the most, pro if not the most proper, prosperous generation, was the baby boomer generation. Their marriages lasted the longest. You know why? Because baby judgment will bring about redemption because it humbles your little prideful spirit it humbles your little rebellious spirit the lord knows what he's doing he knows you're not going to like his wrath he knows you're not going to but he doesn't like your rebellion your rebellion is angering him our rebellion in this country is angering him our rebellion in our in our uh, uh, um in our personal lives angers him after a while he gives us chance after chance grace after grace mercy after mercy but you just keep on going you just keep on steering down that road and the lord is saying turn back turn back warning 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 turn back and you're still going down the road let me encourage all of us turn around Turn around and go back the other way, unbeliever, secular, heathen, body of Christ. Let's clean it up. Let's get those areas. If you know you got an unclean 
area. I'm right with you. If you know you got an unclean area, let's clean it up. Let's clean it up. And I'm saying I'm right with you because I'm not here to, be, to, to whoop nobody over the head with nothing. I know many of us are struggling, but let me tell you something. Let me comfort you and let us take instruction in the Lord Jesus. He is more powerful than that thing that we're struggling with. So let him do that. And he promised he'll perform that work in us to the day of Jesus Christ. Let me say to the unbeliever, if you're struggling with drugs, if you're struggling with, and, and you hate it, and you just keep on doing it, and you don't, and you want to be free, come to the Lord Jesus. He will break that power in you. Hear me right now in the Holy Ghost. He will, let's, let's listen, listen, listen carefully. He will break that struggle in you. He will break that power in you if you will give it to him. If you will yield it to him, he will break that power in you. I am a witness. He has broken so much in my life, and he continues to do his perfect work in me. Come on, and let's get it down our spirit. When we are considering the foundation, when you start mixing your faith, you come up with another uh, Jesus. You come up with another spirit. You come up with another gospel. And the problem with coming up with another gospel is the gospel regulates your life. It is the word that regulates the believer's life. It is also the word that regulates the unbeliever's life. To the believer, to salvation and eternal life. To the unbeliever, damnation and eternal judgment. But the word of the Lord is governing everyone's life, whether you realize it or not, you want it or not, you like it or not, you don't like it or not, the Lord does not care. His word is sovereign. It's going to govern your life whether you want it or not. So if you want to make it easy, listen, just yield, just surrender to the Lord Jesus, give your life to him. This is not about religion or church or having a good religion and a good church and a sweet little peaceful religion on Sunday that I go there doesn't shake up my spirit, doesn't challenge me, doesn't convict me, doesn't grip me does nothing, and then I come home, eat my little chicken dinner, and I woke up a sinner, and I lay down a sinner, I wake up judged by the wrath of the Lord uh, to that eternal lake of fire, and I go to, and, and, and I and I go to sleep, and I go down and sleep in the same predicament and in the same manner. It is time out for that foolishness, because I'm trying to preach you out of the lake of fire, not trying to preach you in. Galatians, the first chapter, let's go. We're going into this word today. I hope you're ready. This is a word ministry, as I alluded to earlier. We are a word ministry. We're already in 2 Corinthians 11. Just skip over one book, short distance. Matter of fact, in my Bible, I only had to go over one page. Galatians, the first chapter, 6 through 12. Galatians, the first chapter. I wish I had some readers today. I wish I had some readers because my spirit is indeed willing. My flesh is a little weak this week right now from all the fasting that, that, that I've been doing and, and different things. But that's okay because the Lord has called me to it and I love it. My, my flesh is a little weak. Y'all pray for me. But my spirit is indeed willing. It's on fire in the Holy Ghost. And that's why it's on fire because I, I, I neglect my flesh. Okay. Uh, listen, I've been preaching for 30 years and I, and I don't eat before I preach. I might take a sip of water or something. And I, and, but other than that. And at this point, a sip of coffee, but I don't eat. I fast because I because I want my spirit to be clear and I want my spirit to be sharp. I don't want nothing. And by the way, many of you need to stop eating because you'd be belching while you're preaching. I said it. I know you don't like it. You'd be belching while you're preaching. It's disgusting looking, so cut it out. Learn to fast before you preach if you can. Don't let me get you in trouble with your doctor. If you can't, that's okay, too. Just maybe do it earlier so when you come, you could be a little dried out, all right? That's just from 30 years of preaching all over. All right, I marvel that you, Galatians, first chapter, for those of you just joining, we bless the Lord for all of you that are joining or will be joined. We're talking about preaching another Jesus, our third session, if you missed the first two. Uh, on YouTube, if you're not a subscriber, hit that bell, turn on the notifications, hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications. Uh, my media team will thank you, and all in the in, in, in Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas will thank you. It's not about money. We don't receive any funds here other than what the Lord uh, sends to us and blesses us with. As those of you are gracious, and many of you are uh, blessing the ministry, and we bless the Lord for all of you. If you'd like to partner with us, let us know. We thank the Lord for all of you. Uh, again, on YouTube, everything's free. We're not doing that subscription stuff that everybody else is doing. Not, don't want to condemn anybody, but we're not doing it. We want it to be free because the Lord has commanded me that. He may have said something to, uh, something else to somebody else. I hope he's talking to it because many of them he's not. But anyway, uh, he's uh, he has commanded me to keep it free, so there's no subscription on there. So you can receive all that word. We got about 200 approaching. Uh, we'll have about, as we put yesterday's uh, IPBS. Listen, Saturday... 
11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Do the math for your time. I got them listed on the invitations. Uh, go on the Facebook ministry page. I got all the times listed out for various uh, points in the world. And yes, we do have the nations coming into this Bible study, in particular, many of our leaders across the nations of the world. Want to invite you, Minister Harriet, we bless the Lord for you being with us on this morning. We want to invite all the leaders into the IPBS International Prophetic Bible Study. We are singularly focused on a scatological doctrine. That means end time doctrine. We're talking about nothing nothing else. Everything is geared towards that. What is the end time church? What are we to be doing? What is our assignment? What are our doctrines? What is the mindset to be? That is all we're talking about. So stop being afraid to get in this Bible study, preachers. Stop being afraid to get in this Bible study, leaders. You need it. You need it because many of you don't understand eschatological doctrine, and you need to. You need to. Don't let the word throw you. It's just a theological term for end time doctrine. It's one of the doctrines of our faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the prophet Daniel, the prophet, the apostle John, 2 Thessalonians with the apostle Paul, the apostle Peter, talking to us about uh, how the, uh, this current heaven and earth and, uh, will be burned up. All of that we're going over in this international prophetic Bible study, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, 12 p.m. for the East Coast, 9 a.m. for the West Coast. Everybody is showing up. You don't want to miss out. Be there with us Saturday morning. Every Saturday we're in there with the pastors from Kenya, Nigeria, Uganda, Pakistan was in there. Uh, I'm telling you, all the world, Philippines, they're all in there. So come on out. Get on here if you're not doing anything on Saturday. Even if you can give us 5, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you can give, we're on there. The floor is open. So if you want to say something, leaders. From all, Johnny, you want to say something? You got some? Any questions? We're fielding all questions. We're not scared of nothing. We're fielding all questions. Be on that broadcast with us. Be on that broadcast with this International Prophetic Bible Study. Listen, we're already almost two months in. If you missed any of those sessions, right on YouTube, hit the subscribe button again, turn on your notifications so you don't miss another word. Yesterday's uh, we were in uh, IPBS yesterday. It will be up for you shortly today. My media team's working on it. It'll be up there for you along with this broadcast here. All right, let's get into the word of the Lord. We're still under an hour. Galatians, the first chapter and the sixth verse. I marvel that ye are so soon. Please listen to the Holy Ghost forensically. Remove from him that called you into the grace of Christ on to another gospel i would underline that unto another gospel that's what we're that's the holy ghost concern for us today preaching another gospel you got another gospel because you mixed your faith you got another jesus you got another spirit you got another gospel because we think we can mix everything in with our faith we can do the horoscope we can do the lotto we can do a little drinking and a little smoking joking and bloking we could do a little horoscope we could get into a little astrology a little new age a little wickedism guyanism Buddhism, all the ism sisters. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. We can't mix our faith. Once you mix your faith, you got another Jesus, you got another spirit, and you got another gospel. And this is what he is saying here. The Apostle Paul to the church of Galatia, he said, I marvel that you are so, he said, marvel there translated in the original Greek as he is astonished, flabbergasted would be another word, that you are so soon. Some of you, as soon as the word of the Lord hits your heart, Satan came and stole it. That is in the parable of the sower. So that's all he is giving us right here is the parable of the sower. In essence, he said, I am flabbergasted. I'm astounded. I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. No, it's not. It's a seducing doctrine of demons. Come on and get it in your spirit, which is not, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. America, that's definitely talking to us because they're troubling you right now. Get in this line, so your $25,000 seed, the Lord's going to bless you. Wrong answer. Doesn't work like that. Matter of fact, many of you don't know because you don't study church history that Satan has brought this before. It's called the sale of indulg indulgences. Many of you know the great reformer. Uh, you know the great reformer uh, Martin Luther. You know he had a ninety-five thesis for those of my theological students that are more astute, and he nailed it on the door of Wittenberg, Germany. Come on, I don't have a PhD in theology for nothing. Actually, we don't call it a PhD, it's a THD, but I say PhD for your understanding, okay? But I have a doctorate in theology. When he nailed that 95 thesis on that door, Wittenberg, Germany, 95% of that 95 thesis was on what's called the sale of indulgences, where the church charges for blessings. 
You don't recognize this demon. It's an old one. It's not a new one. And because the church broke, uh, the Protestant church broke away from Catholicism, those spirits follow us just like America broke away from Britain and its so-called independence, but the demon still passed over the waters. Mm -hmm. So feudalism turned to slavery. It was just a grotesque perversion of it. Same spirit. Come on and get it down in your spirit. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I don't care. Come on and get it in your spirit. This is what it's all about is getting the truth of the Lord's spirit so we can be changed and we can be delivered. Come on and hear the Holy Ghost on this morning. Catholicism, Protestantism, that's why it's called the Reformation. Protestantism broke off from Catholicism forcibly because it's not like Martin Luther and them wanted to break away from the Catholic Church. They were kicked out of it. They were excommunicated. So they were forced to this Reformation, okay, in the physical sense. In the essential sense, the Holy Ghost gave him that great doctrine in the Latin called sola gratia, that we're saved by grace through faith. See, many of you don't know your doctrines in the church. You don't know sola fine. You don't know faith. And that's why we need our true gospel and not this little flimsy pansy one that has been flipped around in the church, this little hyper grace gospel where everything goes and everybody gets reward. And every, your Bible doesn't say everybody's going to get reward. Come on, get that down in your spirit. I'm telling you, all don't like this kind of preaching. I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's a joke that Satan is telling you and you're feeding on these seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Come on, this perversion of the gospel of Christ, this sale of indulgences. Martin Luther, the great reformer, John Tetzel was his arch enemy. John Tetzel was known for, go was known for going through uh, the empire, and he says, when heaven hears the clink of your coin in the chest, the souls of your loved ones will rise out of purgatory. That's where that doctrine comes from. We don't know, so we keep up with this foolishness. So your preachers got demons in them, paying for blessings. Bring that $1,000, the Lord's going to heal you. Bring that $2,000, the Lord's going to give you this Hollywood star job, make you a superstar, make you famous. Jesus didn't preach that. That's another gospel coming from another spirit, coming from another Jesus. I can't stress it enough. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is speaking to us on this morning. He is fiery hot in this place. And I know it right well down in my soul, the old saints used to say, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That's all your hyper grace apostate preachers. Verse 8, but though we or an angel, and remember the scriptures who were created greater in power and stature from heaven, Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. Do you understand? Many of you don't understand what he just did right there. He said, if a man comes to you or an angel from heaven, he didn't say the third heaven. Angels in the third heaven won't bring you another gospel. They serve the Lord Jesus. No. Your preachers didn't preach this correctly. That's why I'm pausing. Mm-hmm. The angels he's talking about coming from heaven are the first, are the second heaven, the atmosphere, Satan. Ephesians 2, the apostle Paul told the church at Ephesus, Satan is the prince and power of the air. We were talking about that on this past week. That's why many of you, you need to leave, you need to leave these apostate churches and get into a real one like Cox Community Church of Dallas, Texas, so you can get sound doctrine and some sound teaching because it's going to be for your life from this point going forward. Come on and get it down in your spirit if you're hearing the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you right now, you need this sound doctrine. Come on and get it down in your spirit. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, uh, you got another gospel, and he is saying from that Ephesians 2, Satan is the prince and power of the air. What does that mean? He is the spirit that controls the communicative airways. That's what it's saying in the original Greek. He is the spirit that controls the communicative airways. So I don't know why believers are tripping about the people at the Grammys. Satan is controlling the communicative airways as it relates to little Uzi pervert and little Beyonce and little and 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 and, and Jay Jay wannabe and all these other people. And I'm not being facetious, but these are demonic spirits. 
sitting up here at the table of communion with his little dark minions. You think that's by chance a coincidence? No. These people are in rebellion. And when rebellion mixed with violence, and that's why it's touching believer spirits and you're getting mad because they have gotten behind your blessed pray, breastplate of righteousness. I'm not saying we shouldn't condemn it and strike it down, but when you're getting, when you got to, and I'm not talking about it wouldn't build a righteous anger, but some of you were just in fear and some of you were just plain old angry and it wasn't righteous. But the scripture is telling us that their God of this world is the prince and power of the communicative airways. So, of course, that's why Satan, and Satan was a worshiper. He's the lead worshiper in heaven. He's the covering cherub. We read, that's why it said for homework, go get Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 so you can get yourself up to speed who this covering cherub was. And it says he was anointed. Satan is still anointed. He didn't lose the anointing because he fell. He perverted it. You, have you not read where it says, I believe in Ezekiel 20, it says, You were perfect in the sum of your beauty and wisdom until the day that iniquity is found in you. He didn't lose the anointing. He perverted it. That's how he knows to have them mock the cross. He was there. That's how he knows to mock the communion. He was there. Come on, we got to put our thinking caps on in the Holy Ghost. We got to be thinking people in the Holy Ghost. That's why the scripture says, we ourselves are judging no man, but we judge all things. That's not adjudication of heaven or hell. That term judge is to discern between good and evil. Between when we got the anointed holy angels and when we got the anointed demonic ones. And so that's what the Apostle Paul is saying here. If we, those who are perverted men or a perverted angel, comes from heaven. And gives you another gospel. He's not talking about holy angels here. He's talking about demonic demons. Rebellious demons. They didn't lose their anointing. They perverted it. That's how they know to turn men out. And possess them. And let me tell you. Let me tell you. Satan is so anointed. He can mimic the Holy Spirit. He can get close enough to it. And this is why I said, and I took much heat for it, but I'll take all the heat when the Holy Ghost tells me to preach. This is why I said, many of you think you're hearing the Spirit of Christ when you're really hearing the Spirit of Antichrist, and he's got you prophesying, and you're taking the doctrines of the body of Christ right out of the way for those who will listen to your crazy self, but I'm not one of them. Because we are not ignorant of Satan's devices, nor are we going to be deceived by him. It says if it were possible, he could deceive the very elect. It's not. Because the Holy Ghost gives us the mind of Christ so that we cannot be deceived. Come on and let's get in our spirit. He says, let that angel or that man be accursed. Paul is cursing men and angels here who bring another gospel. That's why Satan is cursed. Because heaven has cursed them. So he's only speaking what is already done. Many of us don't understand that. Verse 9, as we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel, there it is again, underline it. Underline all these, another gospel. Verse 6, pervert the gospel. Verse 7, underline it. Preach any other gospel. Verse 8, underline it. Let him be accursed. Underline that. Verse 9, if any man preach any other gospel, underline that. Unto you than you have received, let him be accursed. Underline that. You need to underline it so you can remind yourself. Even in passing, you pass the scripture. You're like, what was all that underlining? That's why I do this because as I'm going past, I see it. I turn and say, what did I do all that? And I look in there and then it gives it to me again. It reminds me again and I stay armed. The word of God is our armament. I shared that earlier in the week on the shorts too and on TikTok. Listen, if you're not on TikTok, Listen, get on there, but just get the word. Go on there, follow me. If I see you, I'll follow you. Come on, so we can get this word. We put it up on TikTok because we're taking that over. Because Satan has got all kind of foolishness on there. We're bringing the word of the Lord. Come on, and let's get it down. I'm telling you, there are holy angels in this room with me right now. They're standing with me in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. They are here. And I praise the Lord for their precious presence. They are here. I'm telling you they're here. I know they are. I can see them. I can discern them. They are here. Come on, and let's get in our spirit. Verse 10, for do I now persuade men or God? Listen to the line of questioning carefully here. Listen to it friendly. Or do I seek to please men? Hypergrace preachers, they would answer that yes. Or no, but they'd be lying. Because their answer is yes, as far as heaven is concerned. But those of us who preach the true gospel, not another one, not another Jesus, not another spirit. 
Oh no. Oh no, we don't seek to please men. And if you listen to my preaching, you know I ain't preaching to see to please you because many of you, that's why I get some of the most perverted and crazy comments from people. And they're thinking I'm taking that as some evil. That's a compliment. When you say all that perverted stuff to me and write off, I'm telling you, my media team sees it. They got to block out so much crap people say. When you say all that stuff to me, listen, I'm not, you need not hurt my feelings. You're not doing nothing. You people who say all that perverted stuff, you're not doing a single thing. Matter of fact, I take, that means I'm doing my job. I take it as a compliment. Heaven is pleased with me because you all are talking crazy. Because that means I stirred up the hornet nest. That means I got demons on the run. That means your heart is being gripped. That means you got the possibility of conviction and being saved in the Lord Jesus and coming into the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Come on and get it down in your spirit. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Hyper grace preachers. All of you say you're saved and are not. For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. How much more plain can that get? Please tell me. Can't get any plainer than that. All you apostates. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. Why? Because he told you in another passage he didn't receive it from man, but by revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's going to tell us again. Verse 12, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, that word saw in me, I, I, I quoted it before I actually read it. That happens a lot with me because I'm telling you, this, this, this word is in my spirit tough. I'm telling you right now, it's so tough. It is in my spirit tough, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's in my spirit tough. Listen, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. Y'all excuse me for a second. I got a little technical difficulty I'm just trying to fix, so... Nothing gets interrupted here. All right, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. Listen. Matter of fact, don't go back there. I got to go back there because I need to look at the next scripture we need to go to. John the 16th chapter. Let's go to John the 16th chapter. John the 16th chapter. There we go. I got to make sure that cursor's moving because uh, all kind of stuff pops up here. And I need to control it or else this broadcast may drop out and we don't want that. All right. John, the 16th chapter. Let's go. We got one more. Grab 1 Corinthians 18 chapter if you like. We're going there afterwards. John, the 16th chapter. Fasten your spiritual seatbelt right behind us. Galatians was ahead of us. John is behind us. John, the 16th chapter. Fasten your spiritual seatbelt. Bishop is harsh in here. It's nuclear. It's going to get worse. You, if, you, if you've been in the ministry any amount of time, you already know we don't fool around. This is going to get worse before it gets better. It'll get better when we close in prayer, but it is going to get worse. Uh, Minister Herod, I see. Yes, absolutely. God is now still speaking to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. I don't normally read comments, but I'm going to read this one because it's powerful. Yes, 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 that is so true. Matter of fact, that is a prophetic blueprint that's governing the church right now. If anybody can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying right there. John, the 16th chapter, going to read the 7th through the 13th verse. Listen, I'm excited in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. I hope you are. I hope you are. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, John, the 16th chapter, 7 verse. It is expedient for you that I go away. This is our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. For if I go not away, the Comforter, who's the Comforter? The Holy Ghost. Come on and let's get it down our spirit. The Holy Ghost is the Comforter. Will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. For all you people that don't believe in Trinitarian doctrine, you can't get around that right there. I'm sorry, let me just tell you, not a, I, I'm not going to turn it into a doctrinal issue this morning, but all my non-Trinitarians and all you speaking talking about this blasphemy, you can't get around these kind of scriptures. You can't get around these kind of scriptures. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not even going to argue with you. You just need revelation. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. I'm pausing because I'm going to let the, I'm taking my time right through this one. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, not of the Kardashian comfort and ease and stroking your ego spirit. Did the word say that? No. It says, when the Holy Ghost come, let me tell you what the Lord of Jesus is saying here. He's saying when the Holy Ghost come, when he shows up on the scene, when he's in your spirit, when he's in your heart, when he's in your mind, believer, when he's in your life, pay attention, unbeliever, heathen, secular, estranged from the Lord. 
When the Holy Ghost is in your life, his main work is to reprove of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And when you're preaching the gospel and words like repentance, phrases like you need to be saved, you need to be born again, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can go weeks and months and years and none of that comes up in your gospel, you got another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. Because when the Holy Ghost shows up in your gospel, there will be a conviction of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. That's justice, meaning do what you're supposed to do and nothing else. You can't go to the club and be in church. You can't come to church one time a year on Easter and be in the kingdom. Wrong, 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 wrong answer. Get it in our spirits because I'm about high time and sick of this hyper grace message. And all of you, you know your hype. Let me get, matter of fact, if you don't know who's hyper grace, let me give you, thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me, let the Holy Ghost speak to us and give us a clear way to know when you got a hyper grace person in front of you. We're just supposed to love everybody so that everything goes. That's what they're really saying. You're not supposed to judge, but the Lord said, we judge all things, but we ourselves are judge of no man. Another spirit. Another gospel, another Jesus, and you say you're going to heaven, you're not, you're going in the lake. We can judge your fruit, not to adjudicate you to heaven or hell, we can judge your fruit. So that we stay separate from those of you that are evil. Bishop, that's not in the Bible. That's because you don't read it. In Romans, he told us, mark them which cause division amongst the brethren and do what? Avoid them. Said, if someone has another gospel contrary than the one that we have preached to you, it says you are to avoid them. See, we don't read the scriptures. Second John, that little old one chapter book, the, I, I believe it's Second John, the apostle tells us, if you bid these ones who come with this other spirit and gospel, Godspeed, in the Greek translated as success, you bid them success, the Lord says you're partaker of these evil preacher's deeds. You're guilty before the courts of heaven and the Holy Ghost is the great prosecutor against you. That's why the Lord says all your hyper grace preachers, there's no sin the Lord can't forgive you of. Clearly again, that's another gospel because this same Lord Jesus we're reading his word said that the, all sin that men uh, commit will be forgiven except blasphemy against this Holy Ghost, this comforter we're reading about in this passage of scripture. That's your hyper grace preachers again with their another Jesus, their another gospel, and their another spirit. Get it in your spirit before you perish with them. You bid them Godspeed. The great apostle John by revelation of the Holy Ghost says, Heaven considers you guilty of the same deeds they're committing. So if they're preaching a wacky gospel, you're guilty of that wacky gospel. And you wonder why you got all these preachers preaching all this craziness. Now they're perverted, cussing across the pulpit. Got women coming up there, ceremonially taking their panties off in there, watch them talking about, we're cleaning you in the Holy Ghost. That's another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel, which is not another. Come on, Galatians 1. Why is he saying it's not another? Because we know what it is. It's not another gospel. It is Satan. It's the same old devil that's been there over 6,000 years of man's history. The same one that was in the Garden of Eden. That's why he talks about in 2 Corinthians 11 that how, how Satan, that serpent, beguiled at Eve. He's beguiled in many of you today with this another hyper-grace gospel, Jesus, another spirit. Oh, the Lord just wants to reward everybody. Read Revelation 2. Does it look like and sound like the Lord is rewarding everybody? He's the one speaking there. Do your homework. Everybody's not going to get a reward when we get before the master. He said, many of you, your works are going to be burned up. You yourself may be saved, but it'll be like a man escaping from a burning building, the apostle Paul said. Some of you won't make it. 
That's the, namely his word when he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Come on and get it down in your spirit. I'm not about to preach another Jesus and another spirit and another gospel. I'm going to preach the true Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to shove it down the devil's throat, and yours too if you don't want it. I'm going to shove it down your throat, because I know that's what the gospel means. That's what the word of the Lord says when it says, some we save compassion. Others of you, you're so rebellious and hard at it, we got to snatch you out of the very fire. And by the way, that snatching right there, in the Greek, is harpazo to rapture for all of you to say rapture is not in the Bible. It is. The very word. But because you're not educated in the scriptures, you don't know that. Come on and get it down in your spirit. Snatch you out of the very fire, that scripture says. And the ending of it is, because we hate the garment even spotted by the flesh. What is that flesh a theological symbol for? Another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. Verse 9, John 16, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Oh, I'm sorry, all of you non-Trinitarians. How are you going to go to the Father? You guys are so illogical, it's ridiculous. So I'm going to deal with it this morning. Not my assignment. I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judge. And if the prince of the world is judge, you hyper-grace preachers, so are you if you preach his little wicked gospel. And if you believers, you receive your little pastor's gospel, you're going with these wacky ones right into the lake, all you wacky people. I said it. I know you're waiting for me to retract the statement. And don't, you don't have to write me or email me. I know it's super highly and magnanimously inflammatory, and I'm still leaving it out there because I ain't scared of nobody. I'm going to do what the Holy Ghost told me to do. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. That's the most of the average church now can't bear the true gospel. Soon as you hear preachers like me, I got people come on here, and they'll be like, oh, it's, Bishop, you have 50 to 100 views. No, I didn't. Then people came on for two seconds, heard that word repentance, heard that convicting power of the Holy Ghost, heard that firepower of the Holy Ghost heard that harsh convicting word, heard that scrubbing word that's designed to scrub the walls of your spirit because the Lord said, I'm like a refiner's fire. You don't read your scripture so you don't know that, that my preaching is like a refiner's fire, getting all that dross out of your spirit, all that another Jesus, all that another spirit, all that another gospel out of you. Come on, but you, but these witches will come and you'll take their scrubbing, manipulative, curse, witchcraft, manipulative word in a minute. You'll take their wicked scrubbing, but won't take this Holy Ghost scrubbing. And then want to talk about you're going to heaven. No, you're not. You're going to hell. Let me assure you, you're going. If you don't get out of that foolishness. And that's why I'm preaching by in the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Verse 13. How be it when he... I heard some foolish... Hyper grace preacher the other day, the Holy Ghost is not a he, then what is he? Because he just said that right there. I just read it. And I don't know about you, I'm not illogical. I don't see things and then lie to myself and tell me I didn't see them, like most of you do. How be it when he, this is the Lord Jesus speaking, when he, now I know what you all are going to tell me because you're clowns. Oh, the Catholic Church put that in there. You give them too much credit and you give none to the Lord. That is the true definition of unbelieving. And Revelation 21 says you'll be right in the lake of fire. Go read about your destiny because that's for all of you. So all of you quoting, I know the thoughts that the Lord thinks towards me, thoughts of evil, thoughts of good and not of evil to give me a spectacle in. You will lie. That's not your end. Your end is in Revelation 21. But the unfearful and unbelieving shall have their part in the lake of fire. That's your little another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel end. Get it in your spirit, because y'all won't repent of this foolishness, even though we're calling you to it. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide. There's a he again. We're just he and all up in here. He, he, han. He will guide you into all truth. For he, he, all my nine trinity, he, for he, Hyper grace preacher shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever, you know what himself is? What is, the, what is himself a theological term for? I'm telling you, I'm trying to stay off this Trinitarian doctrine, but y'all have got on my nerves with this foolishness. Uh, so what is himself? What is that a theological term for? Uh, for he shall not speak of himself. Himself speaks of personhood, people. Y'all are so uneducated and illogical. The Holy Ghost is not a he. The Holy Ghost is not a person. He doesn't have personhood. What is the term himself? You don't even need the Holy Ghost last. Plain English. It denotes it's a it is a it is a, a, a theological symbol that denotes personhood. Himself. Self is personhood. 
Does the Lord not have self? Self is not flesh. It's centering. It's substance. It's a centered substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Uh, like God is a spirit. You can't see him with your natural eyes. Y'all are crazy. See, you got another Jesus. You got another spirit. And you got another gospel. That's why you don't understand true Trinitarian doctrine. And I will give you one thing. Many who, un who think they understand Trinitarian doctrine, they presented a crazy version of it to you. That's why you, you're not understanding yourself. But you can't have a himself without a centered ego, without a centered substance. Holy Ghost is talking to you right now, not my Simon. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Like he's doing for us right now. All right. Last scripture. I already gave it to you. 1 Corinthians 18 chapter. Let's go. I got much more to say to you. The Holy Ghost wants to say much more, but many of you can't bear it. Because you don't like this kind of preaching. Because it doesn't stroke your ego. 1 Corinthians. I said 18 chapter. There's no 18 chapter. First Corinthians. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the verses. 1 Corinthians the first chapter. Apologize, everybody. First Corinthians, the first chapter. I'm telling you, I'm excited in the Lord. First Corinthians, the first chapter, 18 through the 24th verse. We've been in this passage here at Cox Community many a times. If you follow ministry for any, any given time, you'll see we've been we we have been all through this. I'm telling you, this is marked up in several of my Bibles. Now, for the preaching of the cross to them that perish. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Now this is what I want you to notice. This is a separation here. This whole passage, 18 to 24, the 18th verse to the 24th verse, there's a giant separation being made here. Please put a mental pin on that. There's a giant separation being made. Because when the true gospel comes forward, it separates believers and unbelievers. Of sin... The Holy Ghost convicts of sin, the Holy Ghost convicts of judgment, the Holy Ghost convicts of righteousness. When that conviction comes forward, it brings separation. Put a mental pin on that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to penetrate that deeper shortly. All right, verse 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer, disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Total separation. That's what I want to point out to us by the firepower of the Holy Ghost. Total, total separation is going on here. Okay? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. So the wisdom of God is different than the wisdom of men. You got the mind of men. You got the mind of Christ. You got the mind of Satan. I call it the, and when the mind of Satan gets in the mind of, gets in the minds of men, you have a, what I call the deathly amalgamation of humanism and Satanism. But when the mind of Christ gets in the mind of men, you have the power of God unto salvation. Are we all on the same page this morning? It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You're not saved if you don't believe, and believe in what? Allah, no, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you know how I know these are false gospels, seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, all these other books, the Quran, all this other stuff, is because the issue of the Bible is not Father God. The issue of the Bible, we say in theology, is Christocentric. The issue of the Bible is the Son, not the Father. The acceptance is not of the Father. The Lord Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Lord Jesus said, I am his, I am, a, listen, not in his person, but I am of the same substance. I am God. I'm divine. I'm the hero of Israel. The Lord our God is one. So King Jesus is saying, when you accept me, the Father is automatically accepted. The Spirit is automatically accepted. Because the Father will send him in my name, he says. So when you accept the Lord Jesus, you get the whole Godhead, the scripture says. We all clear on that this morning? I hope I made that crystal clear. When you accept King Jesus, you get the whole Godhead. Come on. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching 
to save them that believe. When you the, the issue of the scripture is not God the Father. The issue of the scripture is not God the Spirit. The issue of the scripture is God the Son. Every cursing in this scripture is based upon the Son. Every blessing is based upon the Son of God. Apostle says, if a man doesn't accept that Christ has come in the flesh, like Islam doesn't, guess what? Ha! That's the spirit of Antichrist. You got another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. And what does Satan prop Muhammad up to be? Another, another oh, he's a great prophet. He's, another, he's Jesus is right in there with him. No, he's not. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is God. He is not a mere man. Bishop, Islam accepts that Christ came in the flesh. Oh, no, 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 baby. See, that's where you're fooled. You're talking about a carnality. They accepted he came in the flesh in carnality. That's not the gospel we preach. The gospel we preach is we accept Christ come in the flesh as the Son of God, according to John, the first chapter and the 14th verse. See, many of you, your preachers have fooled you. Your Islamic friends have fooled you. We accept Christ, it, it's come in the flesh. No, that's not what we teach from the true gospel. John 1 and 14 is not that Jesus showed up in a body. Your preachers don't have any understanding. John 1 and 14, we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. It is not just about his body only. It's that the Son of God is in the body. God is in the body. Islam doesn't preach that God is in the body. Islam preaches that the man is in the body. The great prophet Jesus is in the body. The great rabbi, the great teacher. And many rabbis, Jewish rabbis, teach that foolishness too. And then put Father Abraham on it. I said it. Because it's the truth of the Holy Ghost. This is not Jesus came in the body as a prophet, as a rabbi, as a great teacher. Islam is a doctrine of demons. The true gospel is Christ is Emmanuel the prophet Isaiah by revelation of the Holy Ghost. God is in the flesh he's not a man in the flesh he's God in the flesh are we clear believers because many of you are mixing these Islamic tenets in your faith oh they believe that Jesus came in the flesh he was a great not our gospel people wake up all you want to talk about wokeism get the real version of it wake up to this gospel oh sleepers out of the dust the prophet Daniel recorded Get it in your spirit. Verse 22, for the Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom. That's all my astrologists and horoscopers. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness. Listen, all my people, hear me carefully. If you're a zodiacer, you're in the devil. Your faith is mixed. If you're a horoscoper, you like Chinese cookies, uh, fortune cookies. Fortune cookies are paraphernalia of the devil. Sorry. Why? Because it's a cookie? No, Bishop, because of the message in the cookie, fool. I said it. Many of you are foolish. Bishop, the Lord said don't call anybody fool. You don't even understand what he's saying there. He's not talking about calling you a fool in general. He said if you call your brother a fool when he's trying to preach the gospel of truth to you. That's what will get you in trouble. You have no understanding in the scriptures. He wasn't saying fool for the sake of fool. He's saying if a preacher like me comes to you, if your brother sees you overtaken in a fall, you are a spiritual, restore such a one. And while I'm trying to spirit, uh, restore you, you call me a fool because my preaching is foolish to you. That's what's going to send you in the lake. We have no revelation. Holy Ghost, I'm convinced of it. They don't want you. They don't want you. They think they're smarter than you, Holy Ghost. They think they know better than you, Holy Ghost. And you're the master teacher. And many of you are just, you called me a fool. You're going to hell. Uh, no, he wasn't talking about you. 
cuckoo. He's talking about men and women like me that come to you preaching the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you say, you're crazy, you're a fool, you're a manipulator, you're a witch, you're a warlock, you're, you're out of your mind, Cox. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a fool. That's what he's talking about, not your version. Your version is another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel. Get it down in your spirit. But unto them which are uh, called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. We're still in this separation. Put a middle pin on that. Keep it on that because I'm about to drop a nuclear weapon on us. In the prior power of the Holy Ghost, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God stronger than men. That's anthropomorphic. We have to firm and negate that at the same time. That doesn't actually apply. For ye see, because God is strong at all times, all wise at all times, he never changes. So that's anthropomorphics for our understanding, not heavens. For ye see your calling, brother, and how that not many wise men after the flesh, you know, the ones that think they're smart in the Holy Ghost, like your hypergrace preachers and churches, not many mighty, not many noble are called, by who? God. But God had chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And that's when you want to call us fools and get yourself sent to hell. And God had chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught this other gospel, another spirit, another Jesus. We're bringing the naught right now in this broadcast. To bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. There it is, right there. Boom, you don't like it, I don't care. Because it's the Holy Ghost truth. Now, let me explain this to us. I, I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it, but it's good medicine. Let it go down to you. Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost, listen, when we preach this gospel, the God, we are preaching a word of offense that becomes a word of conviction that brings the convicting power of the Holy Ghost on the scene every time on time to convict this world of three things, sin, judgment, and righteousness. If you're preaching a gospel, offense, when we say we're preaching an offensive gospel, we're not talking, we're not talking about being facetious. Or crazy. We're talking about a gospel that grips you. Offense. When something is offensive, it grips you. I'm going to pause right there so that I can sink deep in our spirit. We preach a gospel that grips. The conviction of the gospel places you. Places you where? In the concern of the Holy Ghost. The one the Lord Jesus said he's going to send. So when you have the true gospel, three things will occur. It will grip you by offense. It will place you in the concern of the Holy Ghost by conviction. And the final thing it will do, and this is why I kept saying in Corinthians there, to keep that in your mind, that separation, the separation will ground you into the body of Christ. The body of Christ is separate from this world. Bishop, where did you get that? Right from the Bible you don't read too often. The Lord said, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing, and I will be your God and you will be my people. He expects that. That must happen or you're none of his. Because if you have the spirit of Christ, which is the Holy Ghost, he will make the separation. If you're still, let me tell you something, and I'm not going to condemn you, because many of you are still new believers. If you hear, if you, if you're still listening to secular music, I'm talking about that's your, you think it's okay to listen to that as your main music. The Spirit of Christ hasn't done a deep enough work in you. When he does a work in us, we come away from their music. We come away from their clubs. I haven't been in a club in 30 years. Ask anybody, ask my children. Everybody that knows me knows. You, my children tell you, you ain't going to find my daddy nowhere but in church, uh, at home, uh, uh, or at work, and then back in the day at school. Four places you were going to find their father, and I got five of them. Now I got eight of them. And I'm telling you right now, you ain't, and still to this day, all my kids, they will tell you, that's the only place you're going to find me, work, in the house of the Lord, or at home, not mingling with the world, all of you so-called gospel music artists and superstars and famous people of the another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel world called your apostate church. I know y'all don't like this. When the true gospel comes, the offense of it will grip you. The conviction of it will place you in the concern of the Holy Ghost. 
and the separation of it will ground you in the things of the Lord. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace of life. We thank you for your matchless word. We thank you for your power on this morning. We thank you for your presence in this worship service. We thank you, Lord, that your word falls like a hammer and like fire in our spirits, Lord, to keep us in these last and evil days sanctified, holy in your presence. For, Lord, you called on holiness in your people. You want us to be separated by your gospel, by your spirit, by our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to grip us. You want to place us. You want to ground us. And so, Lord, as we come forward, you send that word of offense, which becomes the word of conviction, which brings the convicting power of the Holy Ghost on the scene, because that is what you have designed for this world. You said you didn't come into this world to send peace, but a sword, so that the father will be against the son, mother against the daughter, and conversely, and a man's foes will be they of his own household. And when you said that, it was a reiteration, because you spoke it before by the prophet Isaiah. But because, Lord, many of your children don't know their word yet, and Father, I thank you that by your spirit you're working on that, Lord, they don't have enough for the enemy to come in for the, when, that when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord can lift up a standard against him but father we're working to change that by your spirit by your power and by a clear demonstration of your presence and your power in this earth realm right now in the body of Christ Lord, let all the fullness of the Gentiles, let all the Gentiles and the Jews on the face of this earth, Lord, that are coming into this great kingdom, let them begin to pour in at present time, and let us laborers continue to work night and day to receive them and to process them into the kingdom. Lord, you are calling for this bride. You are calling for its perfection. You are calling for it to be without spot and without wrinkle. You are preparing us and maturing us to meet you in that great marriage supper of the Lamb. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bridegroom, and we are your bride, and we're looking forward to coming with, to be with you in that great day. Seize your people as you have determined. Call us up into that upper glory when you get ready. But until you do, you told us to occupy. You commanded us to occupy till you come. Bless your people to work while this day for the night's coming when none of us can work. And Father, it's a privilege and an honor to stand before you as servants, to stand before you as your seed, to stand before you as your children, and to stand before you as your ambassadors. And we're in this earth telling them about you right now, King Jesus, for you are the King of Kings, and you are the Lord of Lords, and every enemy is going to be made your footstool, and you'll turn and give up the kingdom to the Father, that he may have the preeminence, and as your word says, that he may be all in all. Have your way in this earth realm right now. We thank you that you're throwing your weight around, letting kings and priests and prophets and all these false ones know who the King of Kings and who the Lord of Lords is. Have your way in this earth realm, and while we're watching your glory, we're going to be serving you and praising you and calling men to holiness and to righteousness to justice to belief in you because as many as believe in you many as believe in you you give them power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on your name and so lord jesus we thank you on this morning we bless you father we magnify you in the beauty of holiness on this morning have your way in us on the remainder of the day if anybody needs you lord put them in our path or put us in their path and we'll be faithful to discharge your mind and your spirit and your heart to them that they might have wisdom in their way and counsel your counsel in their way that they might walk upright and holy before you and not pervert their ways and not have another Jesus another spirit and another gospel father we bless you on this morning have your way in our hearts on the remainder of the day and according to your word Lord according you said if we will not do our own will if we would not do our uh, even speak our own words on your Sabbath day father you said that you will bless us and the blessings will flow continuously and you know, these hyper grace preachers have skipped over that scripture and it doesn't require money it requires obedience obedience is the currency of the kingdom just wanted to throw that in there father for those that will hear this broadcast in the future because your preach is still in my preacher and i thank you father for your grace and your mercy and i thank you that you give your true word to cox community church of dallas texas a church of watchmen that know your judgment and are not going to let the stork the turtles crane and the swallow know your judgment but we don't know it and so father where's the sons of issachars in the days of king david we know your word we know the times and we know your spirit and we know what the people of god ought to be doing thank you for your wisdom in us father thank you that even though it's foolishness to the world it is the power of god unto salvation to them that believe those that can hear your spirit nor those that are, there are spiritual eyes and spiritual ears are open unto your mind and your heart father we bless you on this morning thank you for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you for your love and your word says we love you because you first loved us in king jesus name we bless you father Amen and amen. All right. Body of Christ, all of you that are not the body of Christ, that we're calling into repentance and into the Lord Jesus right now, all I have time for, we're going to continue to worship him, continue to worship on the rest of the day. We'll be back here next week, Lord willing. 
if you're not in the IPBS, mom, we see you. My mom's on. Mom, we see you all the way out of Arizona. The Lord bless you. We love you. Praying for you. Praying with you. And uh, just caught that at the end. Mom, we love you. Uh, First Lady sends her love. Listen, all we have time for, be with us on next week. We're going to be here. If the weather permits, we're going to be out in the park, out in that beautiful park. Pray for us because, you know, the enemy gets mad and we start going into the public every time he does. But the Lord has promised to deliver us, so pray with us, pray for us. All of you preachers on here, Minister Harriet, we bless the Lord for you hanging out with us the whole time. All my other pastors, preachers that might have come on for any amount of time, I know they're busy men of God. We love you. We bless you in the Lord Jesus. Until we meet again, the Lord bless you and keep you and strengthen you. Bye for now.